exercise 10.3, learning objective number three. Let's see what we have. Direct labor variances. Sky Inc. provides in-flight meals for a number of major airlines. One of the company's products is stuffed cannelloni with roasted pepper sauce, fresh baby corn, and spring salad. They make it sound so nice, but if you've ever been on an airline and had this type of food, it is not nice at all. Anyways, during the most recent week, the company prepared 6,000 of these meals using 1,150 direct labor hours. The company paid these direct labor workers a total of 11,500 for this work or $10 per hour. According to the standard cost card for this meal, it should require 0.2 direct labor hours at a cost of $9.50 per hour. So before I look at anything that's required, remember what I like to do, and you should get in the habit of doing this, is let's see if we can come up with our actual quantity and our standard quantity. We're told that a standard quantity is 0.2 direct labor hours, 0.2 direct labor hours per unit. And our actual quantity, how many did, uh, uh, did we, how many direct labor hours did we incur? 1150, 1150 direct labor hours. So we're halfway there. Our actual price, we're told, is $10 per hour, and our standard price should have been uh, $9.50 per hour. Our output was 6,000 units. With these five bits of information, we can solve any problem that's asked of us. We have our actual quantity, our actual price, our standard quantity, our standard price. We can automatically, right now, do a flexible budget variance just with those two numbers. But let's see what's asked of us. Number one, what direct labor costs should have been incurred to prepare 6,000 meals? Let's have a look at what that is. What would this have cost? Number one, to figure it out, we multiply standard quantity times our standard cost times actual output. Actual output. Now, let's not get confused between what we have here. Our output is 6,000 units. Our input are direct labor hours. That's our input. Our output is what we want. So standard quantity, we have 0.2 times standard cost, which is $9.50, times our actual quantity of 6,000, will give us 11,400. And the second part of that question says, uh, how much does this differ from the actual direct labor cost? Well, our actual direct labor cost, we were told, was 11500 minus 11400 equals $100. Since it's above zero, it's unfavorable. That is our flexible budget variance. So that's really what number one is asking us to do, is just calculate a flexible labor uh, uh a flexible budget variance for labor. That's a hundred bucks. Let's see what the second part of this question asks. I think I know what it asks. Break down the difference computed in one above into a labor rate variance and a labor efficiency variance. So actual times actual, actual quantity times actual price. Actual quantity was 1150, actual price was 10, so that gives us 11,500. Actual quantity times standard price is 1150 times our standard price was 950 which gives us 10925 so this is called a rate variance not a price variance price variance is for materials now we're on a rate variance 115 minus 10925 is 575 dollars positive so it's unfavorable and finally, we have our standard quantity times standard price. And our standard quantity, oh, sorry, I should also make a note that this is for 6,000 units. Now, we've already calculated it as 11.4. We can recalculate it, but it would be the same thing. Standard quantity, 0.2 times 6,000 for that unit of output times the standard price of $9.50, we'll still get to the same 11400 So, we have 10,925 minus 11,4. And since this is lower, this will be negative, we actually end up with 475 favorable. This is called an efficiency 
variance and efficiency variance so that our flexible budget variance for direct labor is 575 unfavorable with 475 favorable leaves us with 100 unfavorable and does that make sense yes it does there we go so how do we how do we begin to interpret these things and we're going to spend some time uh, uh, um, interpreting these things more than we will calculating them so the rate variance is 575 unfavorable we're paying more for labor than, than, than what our standard cost dictates. And we can see that. Our standard price is $9.50 per hour. Our actual price is $10 per hour. So we're paying more to have these meals made. But when we look at our efficiency variance, we're 475 favorable. So when we look at the difference between uh, uh, what we're, uh, uh, how we're using our labor, our labor is far more efficient so we're not really taking 0.2 direct labor hours per unit we're actually doing it a little bit quicker so perhaps the people we hired have far more experience with food prep and food handling so they can actually process a unit a little bit quicker they, they know how to chop faster they can keep their area cleaner uh, they keep their knives sharper they they uh, can uh, uh, adjust portions faster, whatever the case is, but maybe by paying more for labor, more experienced labor, we end up with, a, with an unfavorable rate variance, but it's kind of offset by an efficiency variance. So we're still just 100 unfavorable on this, so that's still not good, but you can start to see that between these two uh, events, oftentimes we're dealing with trade-offs. I'll have uh, more to say about that in, uh, in each question that we do about uh, how to interpret this. That is 10.3. Exercise 10.4. Learning objective number four. Let's see what we have. Variable overhead variances. Claims management provides claims processing services to several large health insurance providers. Customers who are covered by health insurance provided by one of claims management partners submit their claims for health and dental services along with related documentation and the employees at claims management compare their claims the details of their benefit plans and calculate the value of the benefits owed the company uses a predetermined variable overhead rate based on direct labor hours now that's important here we need to know what their very what the variable part of their overhead rate is based on and we were told direct labor hours let's keep that in mind in the month of september 15,000 claims were processed using 4500 direct labor hours before we go any further let's make a note of that our actual quantity was 4500 direct labor hours our actual output was 15,000 claims there we go uh, the company incurred a total of 4,900 in variable overhead costs. So AQ times AP, actual quantum's actual price, is 4,950. According to the company standards, 0.25 direct labor hours are required to process a claim. Let's make a note of that. So our standard quantity is 0.25 direct labor hours per claim. And the variable overhead rate is $1.20 per direct labor hour. So our standard price is $1.20 per direct labor hour. With these variables, we can solve any problem that comes our way. So as you read the question, you will uh, serve yourself very well, especially during exams, so that you don't get over, uh, 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 so, sort of uh, overtaken by the detail or the length of the question. If you make a note in the margin for, and you're looking for AQ, average, uh, uh, actual quantity, AP, actual price, SQ, SP, and actual output, those five. If you can find those five in the question, that's it. Go right to go go right to the solutions because that's all you need. So let's see if this will serve our needs. Required, number one, what variable overhead cost should have been incurred to process the 15,000 claims? How much does this differ from the actual variable overhead? So we know that it's going to be our standard quantity times our standard price 
times actual output. So, do we have all of these? SQ, we have is 0.25. SP, we find is $1.20. Actual output, we find is 15,000. Look at that. Once you identify them, that's the hard part. Once you identify them, all you're doing is you're just plugging numbers into the formulas, right? $4,500. So, we actually incurred 4,950 minus the 4,500 equals a positive number of $450. That is unfavorable. So we should have been at $4,500. We are at $4,950. So we're $450 unfavorable. Number two, break down the difference computed in one above into a variable overhead spending variance and a variable overhead efficiency variance. So 2 is very uh, straightforward as well. Our actual times our actual. Actual quantity times actual price. And we're already given actual quantity times actual price at 49.50. Then it's our actual quantity times our standard price or standard cost. Our actual quantity was 4,500. Where is it? It's right there. What's SP? Standard price is $1.20. So if we multiply these out, we get $5,400. So, this is our spending variance. And we subtract this way, 4950 minus 5400 will give us negative 450. And since it's negative, it is favorable. So our spending variance is favorable. Now we go to the last line, which is standard quantity, 4. 15,000 claims times the standard price. If we hadn't calculated in number one, we'd still enter in this, uh, this formula over here. Since we've already done it, we know it's 4,500. So our efficiency variance, which is what we're calculating here, and efficiency variance, is the difference between this. 5,400 minus 4,500 is, is positive 900. Since it's positive, it is unfavorable. All that is left is to look at our flexible budget variance. And what do we find? We find that we have $450 unfavorable. 450 unfavorable, and the difference between the two is 450, so we got it. So what does this mean? Well, it means for our spending variance, one of two things happened. Either the costs of our inputs were actually lower than, than uh, what we had budgeted for, or we used less of them each time. For our efficiency variance, we can say nothing about the overhead itself. We can only talk about the cost driver. What drives the efficiency vari variance? We're told it's direct labor hours. So if we have, if we incur more direct labor hours than the standard, we will have an unfavorable efficiency variance. So the unfavorable efficiency variance has to do with our cost driver, the direct labor hours, and not with the overhead uh, items itself. So we end up with a, uh, uh, a $450 unfavorable um, variance because our spending variance was favorable, but our efficiency variance was unfavorable. That is 10.4.